and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my new simple income and expense tracker for Google Sheets. This is going to be a one tab template and it's going to be a very simple way for you to track whatever money comes in and whatever money goes out during a particular month. So if you're interested in seeing how it works and learning about all the features that I included, you can keep on watching. And if you would like to get the template, I'm going to leave the link to my shop in the description down below. So let's get into it. So this is what the template is going to look like when you first receive it. You're going to be seeing three tabs down here, but they are all copies from the same original tab. So this first one over here, it's completely blank. This is where you're going to get started. The second one is just an example of what the template could look like once you start filling it out. And this final one right here is just a blank original tab that you're going to use to create new copies whenever you're ready to start on a new month. So I'm going to show you how you do that at the end of the video, but just remember this one you're not supposed to edit it. That's why there's a small lock in it. If you try, it's going to give you a warning. So this one is just there to create new copies and you can have as many copies from this tab as you need within the same file. So let me walk you through how you fill this out. The most important thing that you need to remember is that you should only edit cells that have a white background. So very easily you can see which are the cells that you're supposed to edit and then cells that have a colored background. These are automated, so you should never touch those. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to set the month that you're going to be working with. And you're going to do that by selecting a month from this drop down and then setting a year on cell E2. Super important. Don't forget to set the year. So once that's done, we're going to create a plan for the money that we expect to receive during the month and then how we expect to spend it. So let's start with your income. The very first thing you're going to do is you're going to set all of your income sources in this section right here and then the amount that you expect to receive from each one during this one month. So for example, if you're a couple or you're budgeting as a family, let's do parent one paycheck and parent two paycheck. And I'm just going to make up some numbers. So let's just add the same ones. And then maybe you have a side hustle. So I'm just going to add that here. Let's do 500. And maybe you have a savings account that's generating some money. So we can do interest account one. Maybe you have two of those so you can list them both and then the amount that you expect to receive from each one. And that's all you're going to do in this table. Remember, you should only edit cells that have a white background. So once you're done adding in all of the income that you expect to receive this month, you're going to see that your total for your income updated over here automatically. And right now your expected amount left is that same 5,600 because you haven't added any planned expenses yet. So once you're done with this section, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the exact same thing for your expenses. You're going to go ahead and add your expense categories and the amount that you expect to spend on each one this particular month. So make sure that you skip the income transactions table. We're going to use that later when it's time to start tracking and we're going to jump into the expenses table. So let's go ahead and add some examples. Let's do rent, groceries, utilities, and then I'm just going to add a few more expense categories so you can use them as an example of what yours could look like. So these are your expense categories and then the amounts that you expect to spend on each category this particular month. So once you're done doing that, you're going to see your total expected amount for your expenses over here. And it's also going to transfer automatically to your summary. So now you have your expected income, your expected expenses and the amount that you expect to have left at the end of the month. So all of this over here, this table, it got updated automatically. You don't have to do anything here. So that's all you need to do to create your plan. You're going to be doing this at the beginning of the month. And then once you start receiving money or you start spending money, you're going to going to go ahead and you're going to log your real transactions. So for your income transactions, you're going to use this table right here. And for your expense transactions, you're going to use this table right here. So let's say you received your paycheck the first day of the month. You're going to type the number one. Then you're going to select your income source and then you're going to type in your amount. And you're going to see that immediately after I logged all of this information, the full date got created automatically. So as you can see, you don't have to add the entire date 
all you have to do is add the day and the full date is going to be created automatically over here and the reason why this works is because the entire tab is June 2025 so there's no point on adding the month and the year on every single transaction you can just add the day as one number and then you're going to see the full date created automatically over here this has a great background you're not supposed to edit it so every time you receive money you're just going to go ahead and log a transaction on the income table and you're going to notice that as you're doing that your actual amounts are updating automatically over here so let's take a look at parent one paycheck right now you have 1250 which is our first transaction over here but if i were to add another transaction for the other half of the money, you're going to see that now my actual amount is 2,500, which is what I was expecting. So the difference is zero. If for some reason you make more money than that, you're going to see the difference over here. So whenever the difference is green, that means you made more money than you were expecting. And if it's red, you made less money than you were expecting on each of these income sources. So as you're adding transactions, you're going to notice that your total actual amount gets updated automatically on your summaries. And you're also going to see how this graph is updating automatically. So you're going to be able to see the percentage that each of these income sources represents out of your total actual income so whenever you receive money you're gonna log the transactions in the income transactions table and then whenever you spend money you're going to log a transaction in the expense transactions table so we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing you're gonna add the day in which you spent the money again you only have to add the day as one number nothing is going to happen until you fill out the expense category and the amount so let's do rent for example and then let's do our rent amount as you can see immediately after our actual amount updated automatically over here it's getting compared against our expected amount and the difference is zero then let's say you bought some groceries so you can go ahead select groceries in this case i'm going to use the description section costco for example and then maybe utilities let's do electricity as our description and the exact same thing is happening whenever you add a transaction it's getting added up in its corresponding expense category and it's getting compared against your budget and again green is good that means you spent less money than you were expecting and red is bad that means you spent more money than you were expecting and i'm just going to add more transactions so you can see how it could look like in the end so I filled out the table a bit more using the description is completely optional. All that's required on both the income transactions table and the expense transactions table is that you set an expense category and you set an amount. The day and the description are completely optional. If you don't set a day, you're going to immediately just see the first day of the month. So remember, you do not have to add the full date in here. You just have to add the day as one number and your descriptions are for your own reference, completely optional so whenever you're adding transactions they get added up automatically over here in your actual column right next to the expected amounts and then you're going to see your totals over here your total actual amount over here and again your total actual amount on your summary table so you can compare what you were expecting to make against what you actually ended up making what you expected to spend against what you actually spent and then you were expecting to have 1200 left you ended up having 1411 so you can see the difference in this column right here and you have this graph that will get created automatically comparing your expected amount against your actual amounts and finally you have your rollover so this section is completely optional it starts right here and what you're going to be using this for is if you're using money that you had left from previous months and you want your spreadsheet to carry that over what you're going to do is you're going to add an expected amount over here so let's create a scenario where you were saving for a big trip and you are now going to spend that money so let's do five thousand dollars so i add that as my expected amount in the expense section and then I'm just gonna add it as one single transaction but obviously it would be several transactions so what's gonna happen is I'm going to have a big negative amount left so if you want to add some money into this tab that won't be considered as income you can do that in this rollover section so for example you were saving those 5,000 and now you're gonna be using them here so you can add 5,000 as your expected amount and let's say maybe you ended up saving $500 
dollars more. So nothing's gonna happen until you check the box. As you can see, once I checked the box, that rollover amount got transferred into the summary. So now what you're seeing is your rollover plus your income minus your expenses. And then this is going to be your amount left. So you can choose to add this and then hide it and show it dynamically. So you can check uncheck the box or you can completely ignore this section. It's optional. So that's pretty much how the spreadsheet works. And once you're done with one month, the proper way to start over on a new month is to create a copy from the blank version. So the way you're gonna do that, super easy, you're just gonna right click on the blank version tab and you're going to select the option duplicate so once you do that you're going to get a new tab that says copy of blank version you can double click on the name and then do july 2025 for example so you can rename it to whatever you want and then you're ready to start over so again you need to start by setting the month that you're going to be working with the year and then you can go ahead start creating your plan your expected amounts for income and expenses and then your transactions and if your months are fairly similar you can just copy whatever you had as expected amounts for the previous month and then paste them over your new month just be very careful to actually paste them whatever they're supposed to go you should only edit cells that have a white background so once that's done you can make the necessary adjustments and you can start tracking and finally if you're not into the color pink totally get it all you have to do to change the theme color is click on format theme customize and then you're gonna see these three accent colors these are the three pinks that i used you're also gonna see this gray one over here so whenever you change one of these colors it's gonna update on the template so just make sure that if you're replacing a darker shade of pink you replace it with a dark shade of whatever color you're choosing and then if you're replacing a light shade you replace it with another light shade just so that your fonts don't get lost so that's it for this video i hope you liked it i hope you found it useful if you would like to get the template i'm gonna leave the link to my shop in the description i'm also gonna leave my email in the description so if you have any questions please feel free to reach out and i'll be happy to answer them thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video